And now it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Mike Vincent. Hello everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, Michael Vincent here and today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, I've been getting lots of emails and messages and comments on the videos recently with a very common theme and that being I own the core set uh, but I love this game, I want to get more. What order should I go about buying more expansions and adventure packs for this game? I, I can understand and appreciate that it would be almost overwhelming if you only own the core set to know <clears throat> what direction to go in if you want to buy more expansions for this game. There's sets of adventure packs, there's three of those. There's Nightmare decks, there's Gen Con exclusive um, quests, and then there's uh, the Saga expansions for The Hobbit, for Lord of the Rings, there's other self-contained expansions. And so <clears throat> what I'm going to do today is go through, um, in my opinion, my humble opinion, what the best order is to go about if you only own, own the core set, which sets should I pick up in which order, uh, and basically I'm going to look at a few factors for each set looking at difficulty, uh, different themes you might enjoy, and hopefully give you some idea what direction to go in if you decide you would like to buy more other than just the core set for Lord of the Rings. Uh, so I'm a bit sick at this moment, so if my voice sounds a little funky, uh, I apologize for that. Um, so why don't we jump in and start with uh, the first thing to buy, in my opinion, after you own the Lord of the Rings uh, core set. So I thought I would just go over one thing quickly before we jump in, and it's worth noting that there are three different types of expansions uh, for this game. And the first of these is Adventure Packs. Now unfortunately I did not keep the original boxes for the first two Adventure Pack cycles. So all Adventure Pack cycles have a theme. So we have the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle, the Dweradwell cycle, the Against the Shadow cycle, and we know that there's a Ringmaker cycle which has been announced uh, but hasn't been released yet. So for each cycle there will be six packs that look like uh, the ones you see here. So do keep in mind the box art for the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle and the Dweradwell cycle I no longer have. So I've put these little post-it notes on there just so you know which one I am referring to. Uh, these all are from the Against the Shadow cycle. So each one of these, um, there's six. Uh, they come with one hero, uh, a handful of player cards, and then you're always given one quest uh, with encounter cards for that quest. So just keep in mind that that's what I'm referring to. So now we will jump in and look at the in my opinion, best order to go about buying expansions for Lord of the Rings card game. Okay, so you've bought the Lord of the Rings, the card game, you have the core set, and you feel like you've played through those quests, you've beat them, and now you're ready to go out and start expanding and buy some other packs. So I think the best place to start would be the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, it's relatively cheap, uh, between $13 and $20 for these, depending on where you buy them. Uh, but when you go in, you're going to have one quest, so by the time you buy all six, you'll have six quests to play, you'll have six new heroes, and you'll have a pretty good collection of new player cards to help expand the card base you already have. Um, the reason that Shadows of Mirkwood Cycle is really good entry is that these quests aren't too difficult. Um, now they may not be the highest rated quests in terms of enjoyment, but they're going to be ones that you're going to be able to get through, uh, they're not going to be too frustrating or challenging, and you're going to be able to expand your card base. Now I have done reviews um, of each one of these adventure packs in this cycle, so I would encourage you to go back and check those out uh, if you want to know more. Uh, but if not, I think it's safe to say if you own the core set and you just want to start expanding that the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle is your best bet. Now from here there's going to be a few options, so let's take a look at those. So after you've gone through the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle, then I would say there's probably two good options to go from uh, from there. If you are interested in dwarves, uh, if you like the Misty Mountains uh, as a setting, then perhaps you want to jump into your first big box expansion, and this is Casa Doom. Uh, certainly has a recurring theme of dwarves. Uh, I've also done a review of this box set, so if you want to know what cards are included in there, you can go in. Uh, these quests are challenging, I would say certainly a step up from the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle, but you're going to be able to accomplish them with the expansion and the previous cards that you have. Um, a lot of the cards in this Casa Doom set are sort of made for the quests you're going to encounter, and so that's certainly one logical um, 
next step to go. The other option I would say would be to tackle the Duero Delph cycle. Um, if you enjoy buying the smaller adventure packs, uh, each with a new hero and a new quest to go on, this is going to get you six new quests, uh, some really interesting heroes, and some of the better heroes in my opinion, uh, Spirit Glorfindel, Lore Aragorn uh, are two such examples. And again, these quests are going to be a step up in challenge, but they're not going to be prohibitively frustrating or difficult. Um, and with the cards that you have, you should be able to uh, build your deck strategically enough to get through them um, after a couple tries. So after the core set, after the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle, I'd recommend either doing the Kaza Doom first or the Duero cycle. And so I think these are the next two ones to do. Uh, and the order is really up to you. Uh, if you're really into dwarves and you want to build that up, then Kaza Doom. And if you would like to have maybe more quests to start with and maybe more cards ultimately, then going through the sixth Duero cycle would be good. All right, so let's move on from there. Okay, so my next recommendation is actually a little different, uh, and this may be something that you would not have come across uh, in your local game store. And this is the Gen Con exclusive quest um, for Gen Con 2011, The Massing at Osgiliath. So this is uh, just a quest. You don't have any player cards here, um, but you do have a fairly challenging quest, and it's one that you want to play relatively early on. If you own all the expansions and then you go back and play this, you're probably going to find it to be a bit too easy. But at this stage, I think this is a good time to pick this up and I think you'll probably get the most fun out of it. It is challenging. It is very combat heavy, but I think this would be the most logical time to tackle it. So this one can be a little tricky to get a hold of. Um, many online stores have it. So cool stuff would be a good one or Starlet Citadel, perhaps if you're in Canada. Um, or if you go to your local game store, you could probably bring this to them and ask them to order it. Um, and who knows, maybe your local game store already has this. But I would recommend doing the massing at Osgiliath as a Gen Con exclusive. There are two others, but we'll talk about those uh, coming up here. Moving on. So here I would say you probably have a bit of a choice to make. Um, and there's some important factors that may push you one direction or the other. So once you've gone through two of the adventure pack cycles, you've probably picked a Kaza Doom by now. Perhaps you decide to go with the Gen Con quest, but maybe you don't. But here we have probably the most exciting expansions. And these are the Saga expansions based, of course, on the Lord of the Rings books uh, and The Hobbit. So The Hobbit is in two Saga expansions. So we have On the Doorstep and Overhill and Underhill. And for The Lord of the Rings, we have The Black Riders. And just out this week uh, is The Voice of Isengard. So uh, at my local game store, it tends to get these expansions a week after they're released. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to pick that up, but I'm hoping to do that this weekend. And so there's a couple of factors that would probably push you one direction or the other. First of all is going to be the fiction itself. Are you the type of person who really loves The Hobbit as a story and that excites you? Or are you more into the more epic feel of the Lord of the Rings books? So if you like The Fellowship, The Two Towers, and Return of the King, then you may want to go start with The Black Riders. Uh, keep in mind that this set of expansions is going to be much longer. Uh, of course, The Hobbit is complete with the two box expansions, uh, but we know there's going to be many uh, box expansions for the Black Riders. So you might be in for more of a time investment and financial investment if you decide you want to go do the Black Riders expansion. Another thing I think worth keeping in mind is what uh, types of cards and what types of characters do you want to play as. The Hobbit very much focuses on dwarves, which isn't a surprise. So all of your heroes are going to be focused around dwarves. Um, whereas with the Black Riders expansion, at least, you're going to be focused on hobbits. Now, I think for a lot of people, probably the clear answer is going to be dwarves, uh, just because dwarves probably are a little more cool, uh, arguably a little more sexy, not literally, but figuratively, uh, than hobbits. But I was pleasantly surprised uh, with the Black Riders expansion and how good the hobbits were. Um, so... Obviously, you're going to have to decide, do I want to really go ahead and develop the dwarf synergy? And if you've already bought Kaza Doom, you're already going to have a good set of dwarves. And so by buying these two expansions, you're really going to almost complete uh, the dwarf cycle. So if you really want to build up a good dwarf deck, you want to complete it. And then I think the Hobbit expansion might be a good direction to go. But if you're not big into dwarves, you're really passionate about the fiction of Lord of the Rings and you are into trying out the Hobbits, then I think the Black Riders is a better way to go. Now, obviously, you can get all of them, uh, as that's what I've done. I love this game. I will buy every expansion 
that comes out for it. But if you have a limited budget, then these are some of the decisions you're going to have to consider. Uh, it's worth noting as well, the voice of Isengard apparently very much focuses on Rohan. So if Rohan is also something that you want to get into, then it might be worth uh, going with the Hobbits for the Black Riders and then uh, having some uh, an opportunity to try um, Rohan in the next one. The other advantage, I think, to the Black Riders is that they have very much made a campaign mode around the Lord of the Rings expansions. So whereas The Hobbit, you get six um, quests. They go in chronological order of the books. But in the Lord of the Rings, starting with the Black Riders, uh, you actually have cards, boons, and burdens. Uh, and these are cards that will stay with you. So these, the decisions you make in the Black Riders will continue to carry uh, and impact your game in the voice of Isengard, and you're also encouraged to keep the same heroes. Um, and so there's much more of a campaign feel, much more continuity when you're going through the Black Riders, as opposed to the Hobbit expansions where, yes, you can chronologically go through the events, but you're welcome to change up your deck, and there's really not much uh, that impacts your game from quest to quest, other than, I should say, um, a few treasure cards which you can find um, which is pretty cool. But you also have equivalent cards in Lord of the Rings. So arguably the biggest decision, if you have a limited budget or a limited time, is whether to go the Lord of the Rings route or go the Hobbit route. Both are very good. I think it just depends on what your preference is. And hopefully I was able to outline uh, some of the significant differences between these two sets. So both are very enjoyable. So in my opinion, the next logical place to go would be back to the Adventure Pack cycle. And here we have the Against the Shadow cycle. Uh, another six adventure packs. This is now completed, and this actually takes place after the Heirs of Numenor. But in my opinion, this adventure cycle is more accessible than Heirs of Numenor. So if you want to exp expand your card base, uh, and also if you're interested in Gondor, that is going to be a recurring theme. The cool thing about, about the Against the, the Shadow cycle is they have incorporated a storyline into this set. So unlike the other ones where you're sort of just going through a quest with a bit of a theme, but not really. Uh, this one, uh, at the beginning of each quest, you have an intro, uh, almost a whole page of story. And then when you finish, you also have more story to read. And so the um, adventure packs are very much, it feels like you're playing through this independent story that was written by the creators of this game. And it's really cool. Uh, there's some interesting plot twists. And I found it much more immersive than the other adventure cycles. So Against the Shadow Cycle can be a real treat. Um, has some really neat quests. They all feel very distinct and they really try some new things with different mechanics. And so I highly recommend you play through this. It is fun, but it's certainly a bit tougher than a lot of the other expansions I think I've mentioned so far. So it's not one you're going to want to tackle right away after the core set. But once you have a decent card base, I, I highly recommend the Against the Shadow Cycle. Um, this was very fun. My wife and I both really enjoyed this. So uh, let's look at, at this point, you're basically a veteran player. Uh, you have a very large card base if you've bought everything up until this point. And there's sort of three options, I think, for uh, the veterans. All right, so if you've beaten all the quests up until this point, you've conquered the Hobbit, you've beaten all the adventure cycles so far, uh, now you're looking for a challenge. And these will certainly challenge you. Um, we have two more Gen Con uh, quests exclusive for 2012 and 2013. Uh, the Battle of Lake Town and the Stone of Eric. Um, both of these are excellent quests, uh, but both of them are also quite difficult. And I think it's worth noting that if you listen to podcasts and you follow blogs and you follow this game, um, big fans of this game really like both of these quests. Battle of Lake Town is very thematic. Uh, you're fighting off Smaug. Uh, and it's difficult, uh, very tricky, but it's cool because you're basically just focused on one big boss. Um, and that, of course, is Smaug. Uh, but it's, it's a tricky quest. And the Stone of Eric is interesting, playing around with some new mechanics. Um, basically with time being a factor and going through different uh, parts of the day. And uh, this one starts pretty easy and then it ramps up in difficulty. And then by the end, it becomes very difficult. Um, but both these quests, very thematic, very fun, um, but tricky. And of course, uh, if you've been watching all of my videos, I've recently been looking at Season 1 of the Nightmare decks. So there's three of these so far for Season 1, Passage Through Mirkwood, Journey Along the Anduin, and Escape from Dol Guldur. Now you of course recognize these if you have the core set, as this has gone back to the original core set, taken those quests, and made them quite a bit 
harder. Um, I found these quests all to be fun, a nice level of challenge, and I think this was a really smart move by the developers to go and add some extra replay value um, from the core set. And so um, I would, I think these are fairly equivalent in terms of their difficulty. You should certainly be able to beat all these quests with the cards that you have up till this point. And so I think it doesn't really matter which way you want to go. Uh, all of these can be a little trickier to find once again. So looking online, uh, going to the online store for Fantasy Flight games, or ordering them uh, from your local game store is probably your best bet. Uh, but all of these, very thematic, very fun, and a, a good challenge. So I don't think this is controversial. Perhaps it is. But in my opinion, the hardest, most difficult, and arguably frustrating uh, set of quests for this game is the Heirs of Numenor expansion. Um, yes, Smaug is hard in Battle of Lake Town. Yes, the Nightmare decks are difficult. But I can't say that any of the quests so far in this game were as punishingly difficult as the ones found in this expansion. The cards are cool. The player cards are cool. Uh, the quests are even quite thematic with some interesting mechanics, and I enjoy them. But it is difficult. Um, it took, my wife and I, we actually gave up when we first got this and said, we need to wait until more expansions come out. We will get a bigger card base and we will come back to beat it. Um, this past summer, I uh, had another friend and the three of us went through and beat this in one sitting. We did it in a weekend, uh, but we died many times. We had decks tailor-made to defeat this, uh, these quests, and it was still pretty tricky, but we did get through them. So in my opinion, this would be probably the last place to go. Uh, I would feel bad, in fact, if someone owned the core set and then went out and bought Heirs of Numenor as their next expansion. I would think that would be nigh almost impossible with the core set cards. Now, perhaps I just had a difficult time or randomly pulled hard cards. Maybe other people don't find this to be as tricky, but in my opinion, this is by far the most difficult time I've had playing quests in this game. So take it maybe with a grain of salt, I don't know, but I would say Heirs of Numenor are probably going to be one of the last expansions you decide to pick up. Um, it's good. The player cards are good. I will review it at some point, um, but there you go. Uh, of all the expansions out so far, that, in my opinion, is the best order to tackle it. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion. You won't have to do it that way. There's certainly other logical routes that you could take. But I think if you go from a complete beginner to a veteran, that is a fairly good way to go through the cards. You're going to get probably close to the most out of them because you're going to have a good level of difficulty given the card base you have at the time. Uh, you shouldn't be steamrolling the quests if you play them in this order, and none of them should be prohibitively difficult either. So I think it's a pretty good route to go. So thanks for watching. Um, please let me know. I'd be curious to hear uh, if you have a different opinion, so please post that in the comments. I'd also be curious to hear if you have any funny stories of, you know, maybe you did go out and pick up Heirs of Numenor as your second expansion and had a hard time. Um, very exciting though, there's lots of good stuff coming out. Um, they've announced another adventure pack cycle, the Ringmaker cycle. This is going to be six new adventure packs that apparently will be very uh, focusing heavily on the Sylvan, uh, the Sylvan Tree keyword. So this will have lots of elves, of course, and we know that they're going to keep putting out uh, the Saga expansion for the Lord of the Rings. We're still on the first book. And so there'll be even more and more for Two Towers and Return of the King. So it sounds like there's lots of excellent content coming up to this game. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And I've got a busy couple weeks coming up. Uh, I have report cards. I have um, some training I have to do. But I am hoping to come on strong at spring break in a couple of weeks and uh, come up with some good stuff for you guys. All right, take care. Have a good week. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>